In this lecture, we'll discuss an example on reachability and continuity. We will take up this electrical simple electrical circuit, and we'll try to see that whether this uh, circuit with the in, uh, input voltage given by U is reachable and controllable or not. So, uh, using simple uh, circuit theory, it can be established that uh, the voltage across capacitor 1 has a relationship that VC1 dot is minus 1 by R1 C1 VC1 plus 1 by R1 C1 U and the voltage across capacitor C2 has a relationship that VC2 dot is minus 1 by R2 C2 VC2 plus 1 by R2 C2 R2 C2. So, this is what we have. If we express this in the state space form, I choose my state vectors to be the voltage across the capacitors and hence states to be the voltage across the capacitor, which is VC1 and VC2. So, I form the state vector out of these chosen states. Once done, I have this state space representation with me. Okay. The output that I am interested in is the voltage across both the capacitors, okay, VC1 and VC2. So this is what I have in my hand. Now, what we are interested in is to check the reachability and controllability. So, one way to check this is to find the reachable set and the controllable set and then comment on the set. So, for this what we will do is, we will solve this uh, differential equation and find out what is Xt going to be? So, using the solution uh, or the expression of Xt that we have got, uh, it turns out that X of t is going to be something of this form. I have not solved it entirely, I have just replaced the matrix A and B here and I have got this expression. Now, the question that I raise is if R1 C1 is equal to R2 C2, it is equal to some RC. Okay. So basically, the two branches of the RC network that you see here have the same time constant. Okay. If that is the case, then what are the reachable and the controllable spaces that we have in hand for this particular circuit? Now, for reachable space, we know that the initial condition has to be 0 and then we find out what are all the possible states that Xt can reach with uh, some continuous control input, admissible continuous control input, okay. So, from the expression of the solution, it can be seen that Xt is equal to this and from the structure, it is pretty clear that all those states that can be reached are such that uh, the states x1 and x2 have to be the same. In this case, x1 is the voltage across the capacitor 1 and x2 is the voltage across the capacitor 2. So, this indicates that only those voltage values across the capacitors can be reached where the voltage values are equal to each other. So, Vc1 is equal to Vc2. Okay. So, R reachable set over the time interval 0 to Tf is such that Xf1 is equal to Xf2. Only those can be reached. Okay. So, essentially this is what? This is, if you consider the R2 space, this is a line with a slope 1. Okay. All those points on that particular line would be reachable and that is the subspace of R2. Similarly, if you evaluate controllable space, what we want is that the final state given at E f should be 0, 0. So, on solving this, it can be seen that the controllable set that we have here is such that, I mean, we can reach 0, 0 only if we start from the uh, start from the condition that Vc1 is equal to Vc2. If Vc1 and Vc2 are different, then for a finite time Tf, it is not possible to reach the 0, 0 state. 
okay, for this particular circuit. So the reachable set here is again basically the line with the slope 1 in the R2 plane. Okay, so the so you have to start with the initial voltage equal initial voltage, then only it's possible to come up with a control law that takes them to uh, the uh, the takes the trajectory to pass through the zero zero voltage profile. So neither the reachable set nor the controllable set are entire R two, and hence this system is neither reachable nor controllable. Okay, this is what can be inferred from the identification of the reachable set or the controllable set. Another way to do check this is basically by calculating the controllability and the reachability gradient. So we have to check whether the controllability gradient is invertible or whether the reachability gradient is invertible. So the reachability gradient or the interval 0 to t is calculated as this. It can be seen that for any time that you, uh, any finite, finite, uh, final time that you consider, the determinant of the reachability gradient is zero, and hence the reachability gradient is non-invertible, indicating that the system is not reachable. Similarly, the controllability gradient, if evaluated, it turns out that the controllability gradient is also not invertible, and hence the system under consideration is not controllable. Okay. So this is the way in which the controllability gradient and the reachability gradient can be used to check the controllability and reachability of a given LPI system. Another way, so we'll explore one more way, and this is by forming the controllability matrix. So the controllability matrix is B into B and AB. So if we substitute B and AB, what we get is this particular matrix whose determinant is going to be 0. Since the determinant is 0, the rank of QC is going to be less than 2, it is required, uh, and 2 here is the state or the order of the system that we have got. So, the rank QC has a rank, uh, so QC has a rank less than 2, okay, due to which uh, it is indicated that the system is not controllable. And for LTI system, we had also seen that reachability implies continuity and vice versa. So, since the system is not controllable, the system is not reachable as well. This controllability and reachability can also be checked by checking by using the PDH test or the eigenvalue based test. So in this case, the eigenvalues of A would turn out to be minus 1 by RC repeated twice. So A minus lambda I in this case will turn out to be a zero matrix. Now what is the rank that we have? The rank of the augmented matrix A minus lambda I and B is going to be 1. Okay. And this is true for both the eigenvalues because in R considered case the eigenvalues are same. And this is essentially less than the full rank, which is 2, or the order of the system, which is 2, thus indicating that the system is not controllable. We are, I'm not talking of reachability because if it is not controllable, then it is not reachable as well. This is true for linear time invariant system. You can also check this by applying the eigenvector test for controllability. Okay, so if you evaluate the eigenvectors for the matrix A transpose is everything that is in the span of 1, 0 and 0, 1. So in our case, it is essentially the entire R2, uh, all the vectors in R2 are going to be the eigenvectors. Okay. Now you pick up a vector in the span of 1, 1, pick up any vector in the span of 1, 1, B transpose V will be 0. So, any vector that is in the span of 1, 1 will lie in the kernel of B transpose. So, there is at least one vector which is the eigenvector of A transpose and is also in the kernel of B transpose. 
indicating that the system is not reachable and it is neither controllable as well. So this is what happens when both the legs in the given circuit have same time constant. What happens if the time constants are different? That is R1C1 is not equal to R2C2. And is the system reachable or controllable? It so turns out that the system is reachable and controllable and this can be verified from by using any of the methods that you have seen. You can check that the reachable set and the controllable sets are at IRR2. You can check that the controllability gramian and the reachability gramian are actually notable or the rank of the controllability matrix QC is going to be 2 which essentially indicates QC is a full rank matrix. It can also be checked that A minus lambda i and b, the augmented matrix found out of this, will have full rank for both the eigenvalues minus 1 by RC1 and minus 1 by R2C2. Okay. You can also perform the eigenvector test to essentially establish this. So, all these indicate that the system is going to be reachable and controllable if the time constants of the legs of the electrical circuit containing the RC uh, components are going to be different. Okay. So, in this uh, lecture, we took up an example of a LPI system and evaluated its control BT and BT under two different conditions using various conditions that we have come up to establish control BT and BT. I suggest that we pick up a few more examples from the reference texts and uh, refer references that have been suggested and uh, try checking the control AT and utility through various forms that you can see. What you should observe is no matter which uh, method you apply to check control duty and disability, whether the system is controllable and reachable does not change, the outcome does not change. So, you have to be careful. We will stop here. Uh, thank you.